Hey guys, it's Techran here. In today's video, I got a fun one for you guys because we're reviewing our first ever NAS here on the channel. That is right. If you guys do not know what NAS means, it means network attached storage. Just imagine a PC that's dedicated to loading up drives that connect over the network that can be used to actually store stuff and just contain large project files. And that's what we got here today. And I'm so excited because it's something from QNAP. Now there are a few places you can get NAS from, but QNAP's the most notable one that I'm at least aware of. And we got the QNAP tps h 574 tx by the way can i just quickly say the naming schemes for like monitors and nas and stuff are ridiculous but this is a pretty ridiculous of, of nas because it comes at one thousand three hundred dollars i'll put the exact amount here on the screen here but this thing's an absolute beast because what makes this unique compared to most nas's out there is that it only uses m.2s or mvme drives that actually store this device so yeah it's gonna be blazing fast plus with the cash we're putting into this it's gonna be actually ridiculous and we're gonna unbox it test it here today but let's get in the specs the first thing you know about this device this is a five bay nas that supports nvme drives for your m.2s so of course it's gonna be blazing fast and what helps on top of that too this is using thunderbolt 4 to actually connect to your pc and on top of that too it has one 2.5 gigabit ethernet on board plus another 10 gigabit ethernet on board so that way if you go a little crazy with the actual reads and writes of this thing because they're using nvme drives you expect to write a lot through it and you can't really do that with usb like you can but there's some limitations with that so with the 2.5 or the 10 gigabit or even the thunderbolt you have a lot of flexibility in how you want to write to your drives which is fantastic and the nice thing about this too it does have an i5 which is a what is it i5 1340pe 12 core cpu 4 performance core 8 efficiency cores and 16 gigabytes of ddr4 on board so let's get into the unboxing of course this box is pretty big now i was honestly expecting this box to be smaller since this is a small like size nas but uh no that's not the case they kind of went all out with it i'm not gonna show you the box or anything like that because it's not that fancy compared to, like some places where they go super fancy with the box but it does feel nice for like buying a thousand dollar product because if you buy a thousand dollar product you better hope the company sends a nice box with it you know what i'm saying because you're spending for such a nice high-end product but they send at the end of the day you're gonna throw in the trash and we're not gonna talk about that anymore but when you do open it you get access to a little booklet here which is pretty cute uh it's got some adhesive to it so it doesn't move uh, i think it's just a legitimately part of the box weird so it's got like a manual and some information for it. Well, the nice thing is we get access to the NAS itself. And I feel like that's really cute how they have it. They have it in the box where if you open it, the NAS will come out with it and plop up. So look positioned, which is very cool. I will quickly say, so we can pull this on out. This is the NAS, uh, some several portal information. I'm probably just gonna blur this on out just for the time being. Here, I wanna see something cool. Wow, it's gone, it magically disappeared. But yeah, we get access to some cables here too. First of all, we got the power bank that comes with it. And then on top of that too, we also have the power uh, cable that goes to that brick. So that's good. Then additionally, we do have some ethernet cables, just a classic, uh, was it RJ45, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so there's legitimately no other cable that comes with it. I thought there might be some like additional cables connected to your PC and stuff like that. Uh, but no, that does not seem to be the case. Unless there's some like hidden department in the box, but I'm not hearing any cables move around. I'm just seeing the paper. So yeah, that's it. The nifty thing about this is that the thing comes in a cute little cloth, which keeps it pristine. And there's a bunch of tape on the back. So we're just gonna move this stuff first. With that though, we get access to the NAS here, which is pretty cool. You can see the IO here on the back. So first of all, we got the power port for the NAS. We have, of course, a little reset button here for uh, the actual device itself that will like probably take a paper clip to click it. We have the 10 gigabit ethernet. We have the 2.5 gigabit ethernet on this side, plus an HDMI. So that way, if you want to monitor the device in real time, you can actually do so. And a USB, uh, not USB 4, my bad. Thunderbolt, oh wait, yeah, Thunderbolt 4. Uh, port here so you can connect to your computer which is nice so that's cool and then a usb 3.2 and a normal usb i think this is usb 2 i can double check it later but uh those are the ports in the back the front what we got access to is the following another usb 3.2 here and then we also got another thunderbolt port on the front which is sick power button I'm not entirely sure what this button does. I'll look it up later and correct myself if I said it wrong. And there's some indicator lights that when it's on stuff. And then a cute little logo thing here on the front that says uh, Thunderbolt NVMe SSD NAS. And it's pretty pristine, I will quickly say. Now on the side here, we do have access to the little switch. I assume if we open this switch, we will be able to actually 
uh, get access to the dry bay area. Yeah, perfect. So the dry bay area comes off like that. So we just click that switch. You can get access to the bay. And if you want to close the bay, you just slip that back on and push it on down. And then you can re-click that lock and that way it won't actually come undone. So that's nifty. Uh, but the bay area, you of course can figure out how to pull these on out. You got to click the slip, I presume. And if you pull the slip up, we can pull out the bays. And so you can see uh, NVMe drive. Of course, it does have like a little adapter on it too if you want to do something with that. Connects via PCIe to the actual board on the device. But you can just slip in your drive. And of course, you can get five of these. I wonder how we open up this device to see the actual board in itself. I don't know if we'll be able to go do it. I might be one of those things where it's like, actually the screws are under the feet. I don't want to mess with this too much just because of the fact that I am using this not for myself, but for one of my works. I'm just going to quickly like look under the feet just to see if there's any screw holes to see there is. Okay, there are some screw holes on the bottom. I'm not going to open this on up. Actually, I will. Never mind. I'm retracting all previous statements. I'm just going to do this and just see what happens. So I got my screwdriver. I'm curious to see how this works because there's screws on both sides. I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna get the board access. Do I need to open both sides to get access to it? Not too sure. We're gonna go as deep as we can with this. Open the screws on this side. Now there's a lot more screws on this side, which is interesting. So we can actually see the actual beefy cooler on the inside. And then some of the PCIe to the actual board in itself. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of in a weird spot because it's like under the shadows, there's a bunch of cables in here. I'm not seeing the RAM though. There's two boards in here. There's one board on top with a CPU and there's a second board right under it. I assume this connects via PCIe to connect the whole device together. That's probably where the actual RAM is, but I assume it'd be on the same board as the CPU. So yeah, I'm just, I'm, that's, that's my theory, but the inside of it is pretty cool. So we're gonna open the screws on this side. I assume this side is where the actual uh, RAM is going to be. If not, then uh, we're gonna close her on up. All right, with that though, we should be able to plop it out. I gotta be careful though, because I know for a fact there's a bunch of cables. So my big thing with it is I don't want to unplop anything that I don't want to unplop. You know what I'm saying? Okay, well, I can't figure out why this side is being a lot more like this side wiggles, this side doesn't wiggle. So I'm not entirely sure why it's not coming on like that side. So we could go deeper with this, but I'm not I'm not very confident about breaking something that's over a thousand dollars worth. So we're just gonna close this on up. So let's hook this on up and get into some testing. For the drives we'll be installing the nest, we got Western Digital Red four terabyte NVMe drives, which is this is just absolutely ridiculous to look at. Now there's only currently four in my hand. Uh, we got four of these from Western Digital. Another one I ordered off Amazon, so I'm kind of just waiting for that to get here but luckily we can just install these with an absolute low problem but this in itself is going to be absolutely ridiculous so all we want to do is install the m.2s into this actual nas it's super straightforward we want to make sure the small tooth and the big tooth line up with the small tooth and big tooth of the actual uh, m.2 socket and then once you do that you just want to wiggle it on in once you do that you just pull back this green thing back here which is going to pull it on back push it on down release and with that, you can install your drive into your NAS, which is really simple. They actually install the NVMe drives, which is really nice. Now, if you want to uninstall them, do the same thing, pull it back, slip it on out, and that's how you install a drive. So these are hot swappable too. So if the drive's on, you can just literally pull out a drive and of course uh, install a new one if you need to fix it. Uh, if not, then yeah, that's how you do it. It's really nice though. I like how this is actually set on up. Once your drive is installed, all you have to do is put it into the barrier. Just make sure they have the backside popped out. And that way you can just push it on down and line it on up. And with that, we just close it like so and our drive is installed. The next thing we do is plug in our power cable and the ethernet cable that we came with it. And all we have to do is then click the power button. The next thing we need to do is use the QNAP Finder Pro to actually locate the actual NAS itself. Once you plug it in, you should see it on your actual network and should just pop up on the finder. And what we wanna do is take that IP from the actual NAS in itself and put it into our browser to search it. Once you've done that, you will have to go through the setup process and enter your credentials for your network so that we can actually get the thing to work. Once it's finished setting up, you'll be able to set up your RAID. You can just kind of skip everything in the beginning here. It'll then ask you if you wanna set up a RAID or a parity. Of course, we're gonna set this on up. We can click the drives when to select. We wanna select all five drives and you can set up whatever RAID you want. For me, we're setting up RAID five, but you have other options if you wanna do so. The next piece of information, you can go over other information you would like to set up, how much cash you wanna do for your snapshot, 
or whatever you want but we're not gonna go too crazy we're gonna use five percent of our storage for a snapshot just in case if anything goes wrong then you can just kind of go through the rest unless you want to do something else with this but for us we're just gonna set this on up and then it will take a second to actually set up your actual raid once your raid's all set up you're good to go you can actually connect it to your domain to actually test it with your network so now that it's all set up and good to go theoretically what should happen if we actually connect to the nas via runs command we should have access to it which is awesome it's on our network uh so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a speed test because i can't test the drives individually with the actual nas which is unfortunate but what we can do is do a transfer test and we're gonna do two transfer tests one's gonna be on the 2.5 gigabit ethernet another one's gonna be on the 10 gigabit ethernet so i have a big enough file just for this actual test here we have this uh 10 gigabit or 9.56 gigabit file of my twitch stream that I did recently and this should take not too long to transfer if i had to make the assumption since it's 2.5 it should be under three minutes but if it's longer than that then there's definitely probably something wrong then when we do it over the 10 gigabit it should be significantly faster so i'll get a stopwatch here we're gonna drag this on in here and then click start and then we'll see how long it actually takes it says it's actually gonna take one minute and 45 seconds so under two minutes we're already halfway done and it's only been 40 seconds which is kind of insane stop Okay, so it took one minute and 41 seconds for it to transfer a uh, 10 gigabit file, which is pretty insane to think about. So it's under two minutes. Like I, I didn't think it was gonna be under two minutes, but that's cool, it actually is, which is kind of ridiculous. So we'll do another test here with this one gigabyte file. I was hoping to do exactly one gigabyte, but this is perfectly good too. I assume this will be done in less than a minute, but I think it's gonna get absolutely crushed. So we'll just drop this on in here. We should see, see it just instantly get finished because it's 2.5 gigabit. Uh, ethernet port so yeah this is about 10 seconds but i think it's actually faster than that it actually didn't take as long as once so it actually crushes uh one gigabyte files but i'm not kind of surprised either because it's 2.5 i just want to test the speeds of it so what we're gonna do now is a 10 gigabit ethernet port to test how fast that actually is with the exact same files now for the 10 gigabit ethernet test i did have to remote into one of my pcs downstairs in my server room because uh my pc up here in the studio that i add off of doesn't actually have a 10 gigabit ethernet as 2.5 but the server pc downstairs that is that perfect so what we're gonna do is transfer the 10 gigabit file first onto the nas which is on the 10 gigabit ethernet port i expect this to take less than a minute but we'll see so what we're gonna do is drag this on in start our timer and it says it's gonna take around 30 seconds so i think it's gonna be way faster it's already crushing it stop okay so i said it's gonna take 30 seconds to transfer a 10 gigabit file over the 10 gigabit ethernet and it took exactly, da -da -da -da, drum roll, 38 seconds, which is not 30 seconds, but still that is wicked fast for transferring a 10 gigabit file over 10 gigabit ethernet. So the results are awesome. So the next task we're gonna do is the one gigabit file test and transfer that over via 10 gigabit ethernet, which I think this is gonna absolutely crush. It's, it, it took like less than 10 seconds for the 2.5. So for this, it should be <laughs> 100 times faster. So we're just gonna drag this on in. I'm not even gonna start the timer because I know it's just gonna instantly get done yeah no no shot it doesn't get instantly done but uh yeah no the ports actually crush it so let's go over my final thoughts on the qnab pbs h574tx i still do not like saying how complex that is uh first of all i just want to say one thing about this for a thousand dollar product it is an older product so it only supports like pcie uh gen speeds but it does support uh pcie 4 gen drives just unfortunate that it doesn't do those kind of speeds you probably could i wouldn't be surprised if they have a firmware update for it but um yeah for the price point you get for like a thousand four hundred dollars i was expecting to be like gen 4 speeds but but i will say though it does perform really well because i was expecting from an ssd actual bay area it was going to absolutely crush it and fully utilize to address the maximum performance and it did exactly what i wanted with the speed test and the reliability because we set up raid 5 so that way if let's say hypothetical our five drives are in there when it dies we can pull out that drive put in a new one and that way it strips the information so none of the drives would like get affected and still work perfectly fine just one drives die we're good if two drives die then it can be kind of a problem but m.2s don't really die that often so i don't think we'll have to worry about that and usually we always have one on hand in the first place so we're chilling we're definitely chilling um the i5 and stuff like that and all the other stuff in the memory is kind of interesting because when i was looking inside of the pc and so the memory is not upgradable so you get what you get the ddr4 memory nothing else to it 
which is perfectly fine. However, there are some NASes on the market now that you can actually add drives to the device for caching, or you can set up hard drives on them or even uh, more RAM for like upgrading path. Uh, so it's kind of limited once you get it. It does perform amazing. Don't get me wrong. I love the 2.5 and 10 gigabit ethernet plus the Thunderbolt four ports. Those are fantastic. Would I recommend it for people out there who are looking to get a NAS set up for an NVMe NAS or just for a small business in general? I'd say it's pretty good. It's not the best thing out there, but if you're looking for something to get this job done, this actually works really, really well. And I'm very happy with the results. I actually really love the setup process and the installation to this. It's so nice. And the software, everything, just finding the NAS on the network with the QNAP finder was awesome They're just everything else was great um but yeah that's my honest thoughts about this actual nas now keep in mind i'm not the most tech savvy guy in the world when it comes to networking i'm more of a hardware guy not software guy but i thought it'd be fun to test out a nas here today and this is my first ever nas let me know do you guys think this was a good review video bad review video let me know in the comments down below i just know later here we will be getting uh, some other nas's for testing so if you do want me to do anything different in future videos feel free what i can do and improve in the comment section down below if you've enjoyed my video here today make sure to smash the like button get subscribed to me some future tech content because later here i'm gonna be building my father a new pc because uh his pc is kind of in the bud okay so we're gonna make him an absolute beast it's probably the ultimate one thousand six hundred dollar gaming pc so if you don't want to miss on that definitely get subscribed i'll see you now on tech grant out